Hi, my name is Nicole Yo. I am a ceramicist and designer, but I guess I would consider myself an artist. My name is Tamika Wilkins. I am the designer creative director for women's wear brand LA. I mean, she is in French. My name is Bianca Namelk, and I'm a painter. My name is Julissa Arlene Rodriguez, also known as JAR, and I am a tattoo artist and a visual artist as well. When I had my first solo show, I was like, oh, I guess I'm an artist. <laughs> and I was like, I guess. But yeah, I usually don't tell people that. I usually, I'm like, I do art. Um, who inspires me? My son now. <laughs> Cue, cue the baby. Come in. Cue the, cue the baby. Because we have to, you guys have to give some, what? Mad cute. He's so cute. So cute. Um, but, <laughs> we're like, he inspires me. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, before him, it was like, literally everything I would see, um, I would like read books, find inspiration in books, or like see a movie. While I was pregnant, I went through like this, Heavy metamorphosis as a woman, where like I felt like basically I was giving birth to myself as a person. Well, right now I'm dealing with this. Um, I'm at a stage where I'm like trying to figure out who I am as a mom, as a woman, um, as an artist, and and like trying to f like figure out like why I'm doing certain things. And I feel like this is it. Like for you know the the youth, you know, like want to basically show him show the youth like to be fearless and to do whatever you believe in and that anything really is possible right baby he's like i don't know man. i don't know yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how does art make me feel that's a good question I don't know. It makes me feel free. Well, my eye has developed immensely. Um, I would study a lot of fashion magazines, a lot of editorials, a lot of emerging designers and already established designers. Um, one of my favorite designers, I would say, is um, Hitter Ackerman. And I love the way that he drapes fabric. Um, and his use of color and his use of textiles because he uses a lot of different textural elements uh, within his design. So he's been um, a great inspiration for me as well. And uh, it's definitely evolved from, of course, being a teenager into now. So a lot of times I would probably look at art a lot, um, architecture a lot, and derive a lot of inspiration from those elements as opposed to looking at other designers and what they're creating. It's kind of seeing shapes and things and, you know, um, the way different things fall or, you know, hit, the light hits it and things of that nature, which will inspire a design. Um, for me, the pieces that I create, I kind of go with the different design element and let's say the sleeve, for instance. I saw a shape that I liked and created it into a garment, basically, you know? And this sleeve, and I would say one of the tops that I have um, that are here, were inspired by weeping willow trees, the way it would fall and the way it would just hang and you know move and everything like that. For me, I get immense joy and happiness from creating. And it's not about whether or not somebody else is going to um, appreciate what it is that you're creating. But as long as you are happy and content um, within yourself with what it is that you're creating, um, then that's all sh that should matter. Because again, it's not about someone else's opinion um, on your work. It's about how you feel creating what it is that you're creating. And if you are happy with what it is that you're presenting to the world, then there's really no better feeling than that. I think art makes me feel, or at least my art, makes me feel uncomfortable. 
it's really putting yourself out there. It's like a diary and it's putting yourself on this piece of fabric and hanging it on a wall and saying, here, look at this thing that I did in private. So I think my art scares me, but that's a good thing. It's, I'm always challenging myself. So my creativity is inspired by my own experiences. It's inspired by cooking, actually, the kitchen. I learned a lot about myself in the kitchen growing up um, through the things that I was taught and the things that I experimented with and even through now. And I feel like the kitchen is like this perfect place for experiencing yourself and exploring your identity. And I feel like I take a lot of my inspiration from my experiences in the kitchen and from things that I was taught in the kitchen and ways that I feel when I'm cooking and when I'm eating. And that's, I think that's where most of my inspiration for my artwork comes from. I think the frustrations of being an artist is kind of this need to want to take what's in your brain and put it out there. And sometimes it doesn't come out the way that you want. Um, and I feel like it's learning to have patience with yourself or patience with myself specifically. I think that that is the biggest frustration is just being patient and showing yourself love and saying, if not today, get back at it another time or maybe figure out another way to say what you want to say. I feel like every artist is different. Every artist has a different experience and creating is something very private and vulnerable and I feel like you need to be okay with being multidimensional and okay with saving some things for yourself for private and you know keeping a safe space for yourself and protecting yourself and it's amazing to create for people and to put things out there in the world but I really love the idea of keeping some things for myself even some paintings people are like hey can I let me let, let me buy this and I'm like no this is just for me I feel special to me and I feel like it's important as a creative to be able to create that line I think the pitfalls would be like I'm really excited about these things that I made but what do I do with this kind of like knee-jerk reaction to want to show people or be like prove it to everyone like I'm doing this like I'm also part of this conversation and like I have chosen to kind of explore that tension and not like respond to it as much or like last year I also like didn't post anything on social media or like the work that I was making um and so I think maybe one of the pitfalls is also just like the artist needs an audience and the artist needs a buyer the artist needs someone to see them My mom died when I was really young. She died when I was six. And so a lot of my experience of reality has been this kind of like strange feeling of being disconnected of like, I don't have a mom, so I don't have something that like grounds me or I don't have someone like guiding things or guiding me throughout womanhood and guiding me throughout being Asian American or any of these things. And so I guess that part of my identity, I explored through this work in terms of like, what does emptiness feel like? And the parts that I thought I was just being empty because I wasn't good enough, is it actually empty because of this experience that I had? Um, and then also being Asian American, I think there's a lot there of being invisible and less like not having a culture or an obvious culture to hold on to that like all the other races may have. Um, yeah, and I think in that, in that exploration, it's more like, I don't want to be so explicit and obvious with it. You know, I don't want to be like, here's a fortune cookie, and then here's like my mom's grape. Like, there's so such literal interpretations of these um, topics. But I think, yeah, that's mostly kind of what I was speaking to before of like, I think about myself and how I'm actually feeling in these different moments and whether that's informed by like being a woman and not having a mom and not being able to navigate womanhood and having this like rotating cast of people who have supported me in my life that were not that connected to me but they were um, and then two being Asian American I think the biggest confusion of that experience is like yeah not being again not having connections in the world or being this like three percent in america that doesn't have a connection to its diaspora or like connections to other communities and so exploring what it means to be part of something and perceived as something but not having anything to hold on to
I do believe that anyone who is making work that is that is simply trying to explore something that they're finding within themselves or a feeling that they're trying to evoke or a impulse that they want to indulge or like an itch they want to scratch I think people who are operating and working in with respect to that and with honesty to that basic principle can be considered an artist. We're all artists in our own way, our own right. Human beings, we're all artists. Anyone can be an artist, honestly. Like, it's just, it's about innovation. Like, you could take a freaking spoon and put a ribbon on it and call it art, apparently, nowadays. So, <laughs> anyone knows. I think that an artist is anyone that is afraid and isn't afraid to put themselves out into the world for people to enjoy, to critique, to talk about. You know, you're an artist if you dance alone in your room, you're an artist if you dance out in the street, you're an artist if you write, if you speak to people. I feel like it's just an an artist is just overall encompassing getting in touch with your creative side and doing something with it. Do it and doing it well <laughs> for yourself.